Final Fantasy VII has got to be the most influential game of its series, and I think that goes to show with the fact that there are more than seven spin-offs. Some are great, some are pretty stinky, but I think Crisis Core very much falls onto the former end of that spectrum. Released to most of the world in 2008, Crisis Core told the story of Soldier First Class Zack Fair in the form of a prequel. I think most people would agree that Final Fantasy VII is a game that deserved further exploration to the events prior to its main story. Each main character has an intriguing background that ties into one another, so it's safe to say that this game's existence was warranted. Rather than another turn-based console release, Crisis Core was an action RPG on the PSP. The word action in very large air quotes. The PSP game was far more slow and clunky, expectedly so. There always was a large emphasis on magic and abilities, however. Paired with some real-time combat, timed rolling being a crucial thing to master. Crisis Core marries the two genres pretty efficiently, achieving innovation while still staying faithful to the series' roots. It's easy to see this game's influence when taking a look at modern Final Fantasy, in which action combat has become the series' norm. I should also mention the RNG aspect, which again feels like a love letter to the turn-based roots. In the top left corner, you've got the DMW, which of course stands for uh, Department of Motor uh, Vehicles. I remember being a bit intimidated upon my first impression of this UI, but the nice thing about the DMW is you don't have to do anything. It just kind of perpetually rolls as you play and grants you random buffs. That might sound a little problematic, but man, I'd be lying if I said I didn't absolutely love getting like three limit breaks in a row. So while dated, Crisis Core battles are still a joy and the reunion quality of life improvements are very welcome additions. And to be honest, there isn't a lot of gameplay outside combat. The actual areas are pretty much just hallways with enemies. The game really only lets you walk like two steps before being interrupted by a battle or cut scene, which I wouldn't really have a problem with if the story was actually good. Okay, that's a bit harsh, but considering that the narrative is the main appeal of this game, I think calling it underwhelming is fair. Zack fair. <laughs> I believe Crisis Core's story is roughly a 50-50 split between the good and the bad. Half the time it's this genuinely wonderful insight into the past of beloved characters, and the rest is this cryptic JRPG stuff that the genre is notorious for. Let's get the stinky story bits out of the way so we can end on some praise. Much of the narrative focuses on this old group of friends that have since had a falling out, those being Angeal, Genesis, and Sephiroth. Sephiroth is of course the goat, but I'm not gonna pretend like Genesis and Angie will do anything for his character. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad he's in the game. The Nibelheim mansion sequence was incredible, but again, that's only because it's pulled directly from FF7. Pretty much everything new story-wise, albeit a few exceptions, are convoluted as hell and feel like rejected Advent children plotlines. All the lore surrounding Genesis and Angeal is so poorly explained and leaves the story feeling like a collection of random things happening for the sake of shock value. I've gone through these scenes multiple times and I still could not tell you what kind of loveless act 37 BS this guy was going on about. Aside from all that though, I did enjoy quite a few aspects of this story. Zack was such a surprisingly fun protagonist. Given that Cloud was under the impression that he was Zack, I always thought Zack would be an edgelord as well. But nah, my guy is so goofy and it's awesome. Also, he's like always doing squats literally every spare second he gets, so respect. Similar to Yuffie in Intermission, Zack's humor was such a nice change of pace, and seeing him interact with everyone's favorite party members made me appreciate that tenfold. The highlight is of course him and Aerith, who have the most adorable little romance which made the ending that much more effective. Then we see him act as the older brother to the insecure Cloud and oh it makes my heart melt dude. I love the scene in the end where Cloud is too nervous to talk to Tifa so Zack gives him some relationship advice and it's just so wholesome man, come on. So all in all, I'd say Crisis Core is a great game. Despite its shortcomings, I'd still recommend it to any fan of the series. If you're not really an FF7 guy though, I can't promise it's up your alley. Thanks for having me on the show Zany, and here's to the next review.